everybody chad westport here and i'm back for another episode of just one thing and i got an excellent grower and gardener with me today green goblin 510 very excited to have you back in conversation buddy how you doing i'm doing great excited to be here yeah just got done in the garden myself here i wanted to get to something that is important to everybody growing um especially new growers something that they need to know uh i already kind of know what you're going to talk about but let's let you tell everybody what is your just one thing you think all new growers should know. Well, after, you know, a lot of people do investigation into lights and, and the equipment that they need to get the grow tent and everything. And after that, you have this big engine and everything set up. The main thing, in my opinion, you need to take a, a big note on is watching your environmentals. Now, you don't have to be, you know, dialed right on to your vpd chart and know all these complicated things but as a new grower it's very very advantageous that you can keep at least a 55 percent humidity in both veg and in flower maybe a little bit more in veg maybe a little more in a flower but if you fall below the 55 percent your plants will stop or slow down their transpiration which will in fact um, they'll stop taking up nutrients even though you're giving them to them or even though your soil has all the nutrients that they need uh, they'll just stop taking it up because they're they're stopping the transpiration which draws the nutrients up, up through the xylem and into the plant when they breathe in and out they're allowing moisture to come in and out of their pores as well just like humans and we sweat and that moisture has to come from somewhere and it would that usually comes from the roots and if it can't create that pressure by letting some of the moisture out, it's not going to draw in through the roots. So it, you kind of just stalled the whole system out. What, what is maybe uh, a danger of having really high humidity in the grow room if you're not controlling the environment in that aspect? Um, honestly, your plants will really love it. But the biggest danger is pests and mold issues is having when you're having too high a humidity especially the mold issues. Um, you can very easily get bud rot or um, just regular mold if, you, if it's quite humid in there and you have very dense flowers happening. You, that's not uh, something that you'd really want. So if you can keep it in the 55 to 65% range in the flower relative humidity, you'll be doing really great. And even the, if you're using fabric pots, that'll also add to the humidity as well because the pots are able to breathe a bit more. And if you have a larger space, um, one sensor or humid, um, humidity identifying device, whether it be analog or digital, um, on the intake, one on the output, and one near the plants. If you have a smaller space like a 2x2 two two tent or a 4x4 four four tent, just a couple of sensors, you know, analog or digital, I would put those one near the bottom and one near the canopy. Um, if you want to go digital, just be warned that they will be between five and 10% off in either direction. Unless you can calibrate them yourself, the digital ones can be off. Okay. So what my best opinion is, is, is if you can go get a decent analog one, It'll cost a little bit more. It'll cost like 10 or 15 bucks for a decent um, humidistat is what they called. And it will be an analog version of that digital product. And that will tell you very accurately on what the humidity is in the area. And then you can compare it with your digital, digital ones and see which ones are the closest. Well, the two main things that uh, VPD is encompassing is the temperature and the humidity. But what the VPD chart is trying to explain is how fast is your plant going to sweat under these conditions oh yeah it's beneficial to control that for both uh, the transpiration and uptake of nutrients but just to maintain general plant health and to help maintain um, a, even a pest-free garden because if you have environmental swings like that that's when um, 
powdery mildew, well, not necessarily a pest, but that's when powdery mildew will come around. Um, that's also when certain pests' eggs like to hatch when the environment swings like that. So you might have some pests that will never even bother you, but because the environment swing crazy like that, they actually were able to hatch and then wreak havoc in your garden. The rate when lights turn off at night, usually that the humidity is going to swing up quite a bit. And if you don't have a, either an exhaust fan or a dehumidifier controlling um, how much humidity is still left in that air, overnight your plants could quite literally be in a very humid area and be very droopy when the light turns back on in the morning and they won't look very happy. They'll slow down their transpiration as well. And you had mentioned maybe kind of a couple tools to take care of that, you know, a dehumidifier uh, if it's too wet, a uh, humidifier if it's not moist enough. And I've heard the term lung room. Can, can you oh, maybe absolutely. explain kind of what that is or, and how that would relate back to uh, controlling the environment there? Especially in those very small tents, uh, two by twos. I've even seen one and a half by one and a halves. Um, in those smaller spaces, the best move is to get a decent extraction fan and control the environment just outside that tent. So therefore, it's pulling in um, fresh air into the tent in which you're controlling and removing, uh, you know, humid, already uh, CO2 used up air out of the tent. In a place like Michigan, where you have, uh, you know, many seasons and you, you have a decent winter, during the winter, you're going to have near zero humidity in the air because it's all frozen and on the ground. <laughs> um, so you're going to, if you're pulling in fresh air from outside, you're going to be pulling in 0% humidity air into your um, grow space. So you definitely going to want to make, you know, consider that you're going to have to use humidifiers in the winter more often than not. Um, in the summertime, depending on where you are, uh, you'll probably have to use a dehumidifier. In the summertime in the desert, you may not have to use a dehumidifier. You may still have to use a humidifier. Right. But um, yeah, definitely in the different seasons, whether it's a summer or winter, it's going to swing um, hard in the opposite direction. I want to ask, you know, if you have any final thoughts, maybe on just the environment and the humidity, we've kind of covered, you know, some of the tools, um, some of the ranges that you want to stay within where to monitor and how to monitor. Um, was there anything that you'd like to add here for, for some of the new growers out there? Um, don't be afraid to spray your plants down with just water, especially in the vegetative period or their seedling period. Do not be afraid to spray them down with some water once in a while, especially in those winter months where you have a, a bunch drier humidity air. Don't be afraid to spray them down even a couple of times a day with water. Like, they love it. Well, cool. I, I want to let know, uh, let people know too where they can find you and everybody. These are going to be down in the show notes on YouTube. Uh, that channel is the Green Goblin Five One Zero. And actually, sorry, there's no the in there. It's Green Goblin Five One Zero. And you also have Goblin's World, and that has a lot more or some more of the tech sides and actually a little bit of a environmental monitor that you've created yourself. Correct. Yep. Um, awesome. The home assistant and the Raspberry Pi system that I use, uh, creating the different sensors with the temperature, humidity, CO2, and it also uh, monitors how much power my lights are using and controls the timers on them as well. It's it's a really cool tool, so everybody definitely check that out. Uh, and then finally on uh, Instagram, Green Goblin five one zero point four is yep. how to find you on Instagram. Cool. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, hey, thank you for your time tonight. Thank you for coming and sharing your just one thing with everybody. Super important. This can make a grow go bad, but it can also make it go great. So I appreciate your time, Green Goblin, and uh, party on. Oh, uh, yeah. It was awesome being here. Woo. Uh...